Welcome back. You're watching Stockwatch with me, G. Letter to Levy, and joining me to take your stock related questions this evening are David Shapiro from Sassman Securities and Wayne McCurry from FB Wealth and Investments. If you'd like to send questions, please email stockwatch at bdtv.co.za or via SMS on 41392. And for the time when we only have David, because I'm not quite sure where Wayne is, um, you know, you'd think that he'd remember it's 6 30 and it's Wednesday. Yeah, because I haven't been here for a couple of weeks, so yeah, I'm well, not really familiar, you know, with the, with, with, uh, the latest news. So um, Wayne, better put but, out that smoke and just get onto <laughs> get onto teams. get onto the TV. <laughs> yes, yes, he best he had. But actually, there was a phenomenal amount of news today. Um, mm. uh, well, um, you you had uh, BHP and Anglo American uh, oh. the, the the offer there, um, which I found quite curious. Actually, it was. It was a firm rejection by Anglo-American, but they said, but we're going to give you another week to put up or shut up. So that means, I think, that they would be open to a better offer if, if I had to read between the lines. And then BHP came out with an announcement that they're not, this is their final offer. They're not going to make mm -hmm. a better offer. So I wonder where that leaves us. Maybe that's where we should start the show. David, what do you think? Yeah, it's, I, there's still a lot of discussion to take place. Um, no one's quite sure how to approach this because the strategies are, are pretty similar. Um, I kept thinking, I take myself back and say, okay, if I was uh, in the UK or in America and uh, I want to get involved in copper or I want to get involved, do I want two companies or do I want one company? So I, I, I actually think there are a lot of shareholders or businesses or uh, investors should i say that would say okay i you know we would support a merger simply because it's going to be a very you know a big business with a strong focus with lots of muscle to develop copper interests whereas here it's pretty personal you know it's uh, i think a lot of egos involved so i think one's got to keep um, the discussions open yeah. Uh, in both cases, they're going to get rid of Anglo Platts, uh, De Beers, you know, Kumba. I don't know where Kumba's going to find its place or whatever it is. Mm. So, uh, yeah, it's it's something that I hope they don't put to bed. I mean, uh, discard straight away. Okay. Uh, and Wayne, good evening to you. Um, and perhaps I could mention a viewer's question, w which relates to what you've just said, David. And the viewer says, I don't understand how Anglo, the company, can decline BHP's offer to buy it. Surely such a sale implies transfer of ownership from the current owners, that is, the shareholders, to the purchaser, which would in turn imply that the shareholders, not the company, should make the decision. Or do the directors elected by the shareholders have an automatic mandate to make all the decisions on their behalf, including as grave a decision as selling their shares? When Look, I the shareholders have the final. Yeah. yeah, the shareholders have the final say. But even if the directors disagree, BHP can approach the big shareholders directly, and they can say yes. Even if the directors say no, it's unusual for that to happen, because normally the directors are representatives of fairly large shareholder base, you know, of of the company. But yes, what the directors say or don't say actually doesn't really count as what the shareholders say. So any shareholder who wants to uh, accept the BHP, you can call that, that shareholder can call a special general meeting and get proxy votes or get actual votes and, you know, the mm. shareholders, uh, the it, shareholders call the shots, not the directors. What the directors try and do is to give they these canvas. shareholders uh, a fair value and say, uh, you know, this doesn't value the company at, uh, at a price that we consider would be fair. And you get outsiders to come and value that. And uh, I think one of the issues that Anglo did bring up is that this whole process, the BHP process, could take 18 months. And that's too long to wait. So I, 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 I'm i sure that they're coming round, and there's been a lot of influence um, outside of South Africa, you know, outside of the PRC, perhaps maybe some of ours, you know, some institutions here as well, uh, to have a closer look and say what's going to benefit us in the longer term. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but Wayne, um, BHP, as I said to David, um, came out with an announcement. It said it's, it, this is its final offer. This is the final ratio that it's offering. And it said it would not be increased unless there's an offer from a third party. So 
Well, look, it's it's quite possible, but you know, final offers are final offers until the next one comes. <laughs> you know, the first offer, the first offer was this: we really think is a fair value for the company. It's this much of a premium across the VWAC over the last few days, and we really think that this is generous. And and then they come with another offer that's higher, and then they come with another offer that's higher. So maybe this is the final offer, but as I said, until the next offer comes, mm. which may happen, probably not, but it may happen. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll see. Just generally, your comments on the markets, Wayne. Uh, we had the RAND going to 18.04 yesterday, and I thought, oh, I'm going to buy myself some dollars. And then it was all the way back to 18.24, actually, by the time we went on air. Um, if you had to peer into your crystal ball, where do you think we're headed? Um, and, um, and, and why do you think it's, it, it's, it's got such a, a bid? Is it the, the jump that we've seen in some commodity uh, prices over the last couple of weeks? Well, look, I mean, I am a complete stuck record. This could be the start of a commodity upcycle that is coming over the next two or three years. I've been quite consistent in saying that, even though I've been very early. In, 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 in talking about it. But over the next two or three years, we should have a commodity upcycle. Under those circumstances, our RAND does well, our share market does well, our economy does better. And maybe this is the start, but it's these factors that are pushing the RAND. I mean, it could reverse tomorrow if bad news comes out on US inflation or jobs or whatever that, that, that the interest rate expectations get pushed further out, the interest rate cut expectations get pushed further out. So this could all change tomorrow, but maybe this is the start. Mm. And if I'm right and we do get a commodity upcycle, you know, the RANDs in a fair value, we've, fair value is probably 1750 to 17. So that's the level I would expect the RAND to go to. And if the if the future cycle is anything like the past cycle, the rand it will actually move into overvalued territory. So it may in fact strengthen more than seventeen or seventeen fifty. But just remember, if I'm right, and the rand does strengthen and our commodity shares go up and everything is looking much better, don't forget to sell and then take money overseas. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, David, your thoughts um, and, and generally, I, I, I think what we're telling us about, we're about the state the of the market? Of, uh, yeah, I, I think grains right. I think we're at the start of a, some major bull markets. The signs are there, and uh, you know when clients start saying to you, phoning up, saying, "I want to buy copper," you say, "Okay, <laughs> you know this is a good sign." When when all, when all of a sudden they want to go buy a copper bar or something like this, where can I buy a copper? Because the, the and 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 I I have great respect for for um, the man in the street. You know, because they don't part with their money that easily. You know, even though we do say that, they think about these things. And uh, when they start talking about copper, it just shows you that the story is having some impact. So I, I, I th and rates are going to come down. Inflation is going to come down. It's going to start easing. You know, it's it's a rate of change, yeah. and that rate of change is going to slow down. So I'm I'm quite bullish on markets for the next six months to even going into next year. You know, as as growth comes back into the global economy, the problem Look, is. Um, but the problem, China's, David. Oh, uh, sorry. Keep, keep going. Now I was going to say, you talk about the man in the street. I'm the man in the street, and when you start noticing something, it generally tends to mean, does it not, that the thing is over. So um, if we start uh, noticing that uh, the copper uh, prices are forty percent, we're too late. No, you're 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 early. They. They're generally right. They just get it wrong at both ends. You know, they never know when to sell and they never know when to buy kind of thing. You know, you know what I mean? It's but along the way they they're quite good. They're quite good predictors. So we've seen copper going up now. So they didn't get it right at the bottom. But they they you know, they want to be part of all of this. So I think um I can see a lot more activity and uh, people are getting more confident and going out there and now starting to suggest equities. You know, you're finding competition coming in. Um, suddenly clients are saying, you know, I spoke to so-and-so and, -so and uh, he told me to do this and I should be should be doing that and this. So you can hear the conversation changing. Mm. And, and I think it's a good sign. And um, um, it's not going to be too long before U.S. starts to talk about reducing rates. You know, the economy is yeah. starting to teeter a little. 
So yeah. Wayne's right, you know, it's, he's going to be, yeah. and the Rand, sorry, the point is that the Rand will go to 17, 70, 50, no doubt. And it could be there by next week, two weeks time. You know, know, and I mean, just on that point of David, you must understand how quickly things can, can turn. I mean, I'm looking at my chart here. End of April, the ANC was going to get 40%. The oh. MK was going to get 15%. The EFF was going to get 15%. They were going to have a governing, governing coalition between the ANC, the EFF. Everything was just absolutely going to be a catastrophe. And the RAND was just going to weaken. I mean, it touched... 1920 1925 and literally in a month in less than a month it's threatening to go through 18. these things can swing quickly yeah. Yeah, positive and negative yeah just a question on copper um and uh a viewer yeah, and, and, <laughs> <laughs> exactly and he says i've come across copper 360 so specifically yeah. and, and we have spoken about this but uh, this is a, a new question from a viewer i so far i like the investment case i just love to hear mr mccurry's opinion on buying copper he's he's always bullish on the mining companies not necessarily uh, wayne i think you're bullish when when you see that the, the things are changing um it's still a small business i do see a lot of potential there also i'd like to get the panel's opinion on african rainbow minerals wayne you're actually look, quite circumspect look, about a, a smaller player like copper 360 aren't you Yes. I, uh, first of all, I don't really like single single commodity companies. The future for copper is fantastic. This this move to electrics and off of it, it is so good for copper. And there's been no n real new big copper deposits coming on stream. But the problem is the copper price is essentially at record highs. Yeah. I know it's come off a little bit now, but it is essentially at record record highs. So maybe it goes up a little bit more. Maybe it stays at these levels. The longer term outlook is good. Copper 360, you know, I like companies that produce income that have been around for a very long time. I'm not really a, a startup company kind of guy. I, I like companies that have been through the thick of it, through cycles, through the bottoms, through the tops, that have really proven their metal that's yeah so i'm i'm always a little bit concerned okay. about startups uh, i i don't like it but i mean i could be so wrong and i fully realize that as well yeah okay why not take a punt uh so david this time last year it was nvidia day and i suppose yeah. it is today nvidia day and i um uh, you know i like to single out john authors he's the bloomberg uh, writer and he had a long uh, uh write-up about it today and he said Rightly or wrongly, NVIDIA has kind of assumed this significance of sort of macroeconomic bellwether, which is probably incorrect, but it is, you know, a pure play on AI. I wonder um, if it does well <laughs> in its results. Do you think it's going to be a further catalyst uh, for a market rally? Um, it's going to hold, you know, at least allow the market to hold where it is. But um, I'm sure they will meet their expectations or meet the huge expectations that the market has put on it. Uh, the problem is where do we go to from here? They're still well ahead of the market. They're still producing chips. What is quite incredible is that they continue to produce these semiconductors that are going faster and faster or you know, processing more and more data each time and, uh, and, and very necessary and there's a shortage of it. So I, it's going to be an interesting number to go through, you know, to give you an understanding of what the demand for AI is. Um, and, you know, you're seeing this from the big businesses, from, from the major tech companies, just how much they are spending. So I, it's, this is a real story. It's, uh, I listened to an interview with them yesterday, um, you know, with uh, Jensen Wang. And when you listen to what, is entailed it's almost a complete revolution you know of of the way that people process information so um yeah it's an important number but i just hope that we haven't over uh, overestimated you know got too carried away yeah uh, because they uh, wayne as as um <clears throat> point has been made that ai is also a cost companies are going to have uh, companies who want mm. who are concerned about uh, being left behind in terms of computing and, yes and companies not tech companies who everything is about no. AI are going to have to spend yeah. huge amounts of money on the companies like yes. NVIDIA. So it's not a, it's not a, um, you know, there is an unequal relationship. So don't, uh, 
you know, so Look, take it's, that it's, all, it's all, I mean, it's, it's very yeah. interesting, you know, the, the fourth industrial revolution and all of that came really to the fore at Davos how many years ago? Six years, seven years ago? It's only now really having an impact on our lives, and that is AI. So AI is here to stay. It is going to become more and our, our lives are going to become more and more involved with AI, how we shop, how we entertain ourselves, essentially how we live. Um, so there's no stopping. There's no stopping. This is like the move to electric. There's no stopping it. It might take longer than what you expect it to take, but there's, there's no stopping it. Doesn't mean the share prices might be overhyped initially, but longer term, clearly companies like NVIDIA and Taiwanese semiconductors and all of these companies, if you do get serious price weaknesses because of something that went wrong somewhere, then you must buy some more because these are clearly leaders in their field. And the only thing that can really go wrong with these companies is the share price. Yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, sticking with the sort of uh, tech theme, um, a, a viewer asks, is Ultron at current price uh, worth adding to a portfolio? The results were quite good. It seems that NetStyle will be growing in a couple of overseas countries too. Uh, data tech, also in the IT sector, are mentioned as a buy by some of your panels or any other preferred share in the segment. They're not strictly mm -hmm. IT companies, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. Hardware, maybe. It's funny, I, yeah, it's funny, I liked, I looked at Bruinet's results because mm. They were always, and I like it, and I recommend it. You know, it's my choice tonight. Simply that I think they're well placed, very, very well placed for what lies ahead. I prefer it to Ultra. That's what. That's where I'm coming. Uh, so, so you prefer Roynet to Ultra? To Ultra, yeah. Okay. They've always been similar kind of companies, although I think um, you know um, Roynet's. Uh, had had a few problems with their Nashua side today, and the and, and but but Eltron also had various. Uh, they were eight. What were they? Xerox and you know it was here. They also had the cable side. Roynet had the cable side. But you know when I look at them today, I think I prefer where um, you know where Roynet's going, um, okay. going through their numbers. And if you look at the chart, it's pointing in the right direction. Mm. Um, they're also all now in renewables, you know, in solar power and so on. So, so yeah, it is a nice area. We need a little bit of help from the economy, but um, you know, they, 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 the companies kind of Wayne mentioned, they've got history. You know, they've had history, so it's they're not newcomers to uh, to the market. Yeah, and, right. um, look, that's look, a David good, and that's I remember the old Ultron, which wasn't good. Oh. Eh? Yeah. The old Ultron wasn't good, but that's changing. I mean, I can certainly remember Roynet used to make locomotives. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Roy uh, Roynet is a, sort of an interesting case in a company that has mm -hmm. adapted. Um, but but mm, to yes. the viewer's question, I mean, to specifically on Ultron and data tech. Um, so Ultron, actually, you can also see it's had a nice uh, spike high mm, in the share right. price. Mm. Yes. Data tech, would either of you consider it? When? I don't know enough about data I tech. Know. I really, I can't comment on data tech. And, and Ultron per se, I mean, interestingly enough, the, the man who I think uh, set Ultron on the right course is also the current chairman of ESCOM, um, yes. Ted Onyati. Um, would you? you know, I, I, I think, I think Ultron, the last results, and as the, as the viewer said, the last results were good. Okay. Yeah, it, it, they battled a bit after, after um, unbundling bites. But uh, and bites, I like bites as well. But um, you know, and, and looking at that area, that's why I'm saying when I when I do a comparison, I prefer to, you know, I prefer uh, Roynet, which okay. is in a way supporting Eltron, yeah. although you know supporting the area that it's in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, moving on, there's a question uh, asking: Should I sell part of my South African bonds, which yield about 10% a year, plus capital growth? For uh, for the advent of declining interest rates, to invest in offshore equities and bonds, uh, and to take advantage of the cover lower rand exchange rates, I need to increase my offshore exposure to above seventy percent over time. Uh, Wayne, would you sell uh, yeah, your now's not bonds the time, now? Now's not the time to do it. If if interest mm. rates are falling, the rand is going to strengthen. Mm. You must remember, interest rates falling doesn't affect your long bond. Your long bond is driven by the market. In fact, your capital uh, goes up. Yeah. Your capital goes you make, up. Yeah, you make a so, capital I mean, profit. Mm. Very simplistically, the Reserve Bank in SA will get inflation to average 4%. They will do it. Mm. Whatever the cost is, they will do it. 
you're getting 10% on your bond. Uh, a sustainable real yield on the bond shouldn't, in theory, be more than 4%. So you've got a 2%, you've got a 20% potential capital gain coming, plus you're getting your 10% yield. That's not bad. Mm. Okay, so don't Wayne say Wayne mentioned yes. something interesting. You know, mm. Wayne was, when he was uh, talking earlier, he mentioned where the RAND was, you know, the ANC is going to be 40% and so on. And uh, whether we like it or not, whether it suits our own personal views on the country or something, I think the ANC is going to come in with their 50 percent and yeah, they'll I still so, be yeah. there, which is um, sorry to disappoint everyone. I think they're going to get their 50 percent. They'll still be in charge without a coalition. And what that will do is uh, it's going to steady the nerves of foreigners and you'll find rates probably coming down the rand strengthening on the back of that simply because there's no uncertainty you know you're not going to bring some uncertain parties in as well mm. so i think from that point of view stick around you know if you're in long bonds i think you're going to get a good ride there and somewhere down the line you might uh, you know sell them and transfer the money yeah okay yeah. that's depressing Look, was, because the status quo uh, isn't no, I, exactly I, I'm not, I, I, that's what i'm saying you know you've yeah. got to read the tea leaves well, it was interesting. I listened to a chapping interview. It's like a phone-in program on the radio, and the guy said, "No, he's going to vote to ANC because it's mm. better the devil you know." Yeah, mm. I think so. And they've got—they've suddenly found the money, you know, and they're going out there, and all of a sudden they're doing what they should be doing, campaigning and making all the kinds of promises to their to their people and that. So just just watch it. You know, they're yep. they're quite an engine when they want to be an engine. Yeah, absolutely. It's just, if only where they were an engine in, in good yeah. governance, that would, that would be quite nice. Um, very uh, quickly, Avio says, which resources ETFs would be re good resources buyers today? It's the Resi 10? Or uh, do you think they are, uh, or am I just uh, too narrowly focused yeah. there? No, it's probably the Resi 10, because it gives you, you know, it gives you all the big ones, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know well, the I others. Don't I don't know, know what's... Mm. I don't know what, what ones are available, but I will try to find one that doesn't have gold shares in it. Because mm. they looking very toppish. Mm. Yeah. And you can, you know, even if you buy one, even if you buy Billiton and Glencore or something rather than an ETF, it's it's maybe uh, you're getting the kind of exposure that you really need. Um, I don't know. I. I, I, I haven't bought a resource ETF, you know, if, mm. if any portfolios I would have probably billeted. Okay. Know, anyway. mm. Yeah, which doesn't unfortunately give you exposure to all mm. to all resources. Okay, well, I'll get you a stock picks. Um, so, David, you've already sort of partly given us, but maybe you can mm. add something mm. there. But I'm going to ask Wayne first in that case. Wayne, what yeah. are you going yeah, for I'm, this evening? I'm going for the US retailer target. I mean, I know the share price has been hammered. But it's, it's actually, David and I don't have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or a, a Johnny Blue before the meet, before the, 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 the TV. But what he said was very relevant. He said the U.S. is showing signs of slowing down a little bit. And that's exactly what Target said. They said, you know, we've had to cut prices on 5,000 or 10,000 line items because the consumer's under a bit of, bit of strain there. But, I mean, that's not the reason why I'm buying the share, is that if you get lower interest rates, in the US and it comes quicker than anticipated, there'll be quite a strong rebound mm. of what may be a lower base in consumer expenditure and targets not expensive. Eh? Mm. I mean, this is a very good retailer. In the previous four quarters, they well outstripped consensus earnings. Just in this quarter, it wasn't up to consensus, because maybe consensus was just too high given the higher interest rates in the state of the economy. So maybe hold off, the share price is falling now, but I'd go for target. Okay. Um, and David, would you just uh, pile into Royner? Now I have to say I own Royner shares. Um, I bought them last year. I'm very happy that I did because they've been a yeah. really great buy. Yeah. <clears throat> a good dividend payer. I just, uh, I, I think if you break down where they are um, and understand that um, things are going to change, you know, I, even if they, even if we do have the ANC again, I think slowly things are going to get better. Money has to be spent. And they, they're just well placed. Um, they've just got those kind of businesses that are going to benefit. And what gave me the clue was I, after the results came out, I looked at the, you know, the, the chart, and that's that's at a four or five year high, you know, and it's just creeping up all the time. Okay, I can buy that. 
<laughs> Pretty you didn't yeah. buy it four years ago, but there you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we shall leave Maybe. it there. And welcome back uh, to SA Shores. Um, uh, David Shapiro is from Sassam Securities. Wayne McCurry is from FNB Wealth and Investments. Up next, so we have the close. Stay with us. Thank <laughs> you.